We've got Taylor Tomlinson, who's a, a, a comic that's out there that I see a lot at the comedy store. I think she's had two specials. She's Mm-hmm. No, they're bubbling under, doing well. Some know her really well, some not as much. Was not on SNL, but we like to incorporate some upcoming stars in the comedy world. And mm-hmm. we talk about SNL. We talk about in a lot of stand-up stuff, touring, mm-hmm. and about, interestingly enough, a specific subject when you're on TikTok or, or Instagram as a stand-up now. They like to put their clips up from their mm-hmm. special and stuff but you don't want to burn material. So if you're out filming your act, you see a lot of these comics doing it. They do a lot of crowd work because the reason is, Dana, they don't want to burn their act. It's not, yeah. And so Mm. they say- I I like to repeat my act. And I like when the audience either looks (laughs) bored or mouths the punchlines. I just keep it the same. That's me, but you know, I don't work much. I like to start a joke and people go, not this fucking thing again. That's from your first special in 1980. And I'm like, yeah. And it's fucking good. And you well, know what? Journey night, does don't stop believing. Last night we worked at the comedy yeah, store. I went on, did okay. Anyway, David went Crunched. on and I was behind the curtain the whole time. And he's going, I go, no, not that bit. Oh, he's <laughs> always rushing it. Oh, oh God, that one still brushed the cobwebs <laughs> off first. Holy shit. <laughs> he's doing Tom Petty, ladies and gentlemen. No, I'm we like, made that Remember up. the space shuttle when it blew up? That was horrible. But one thing was funny about it. And they're like, the hey, what the happened? Men- Menendez brothers. I mean, come on. Killing the parents? What? Kurt Cobain had blue eyes. One blew this way, one blew that way. I Fox. am not a crook. I <laughs> am not a crook. I usually lead with Nixon. I'll be honest. So she talked about I'm that. I'm not up to date. I would the- tell you this thing about her. Go ahead. She's extremely bright. She's yeah. very thoughtful. Mm-hmm. Um, she's, she's a technician, a scientist, and an artist all in one. Her stand-up is just sweet first yeah. class stand up it's like fun to listen to something that's that thought out our stand up is more ad hoc i think you're yeah. a great stand up but you let's can, face you it can, you we're can not bundle a- me into that i don't mind <laughs> but she was very fun to talk to she's very she's um, quick on her feet quick on her feet and has a lot of self reflection ie therapy and thinking about her place in the world and uh i think that's a part of her appeal being funny and also very real in that way and she goes places you don't expect Mm-hmm. Alhambra. Anyway, um, Alhambra. She doesn't need a Dodge Dart. <laughs> this is the king know, of used cars. I don't know if you've been down to Cerritos Auto Square lately, but Dana, we should get them as a sponsor because I like to use them. As well, a I'll reference. talk to you later about that used car a lot. I think we should go in on. Oh, D and D's jalopies. D and D's jalopies. It's not bad. When you can't afford a, you can't afford a convertible. It's a jalopy um, with a canvas top. Anyway, here she is, Taylor Tomlinson. <laughs> We're the worst. Don't you feel your? <laughs> this is like some kind of interrogation. This is a very intimidating there's setup. A, there's I was a table. Say. I think she's in the Would dark. You, uh, your <laughs> date of birth and first and last name. <laughs> like in front of the step and repeat. <laughs> like I feel like I just came for a photo. Yeah. We just really need a photo, but then we'll do this too. But. Um, it's really just about the photo. Oh, yeah, the, yeah. the biggest the hey. photo will trend. And the interview is just a throwaway. <laughs> Look how prepared he is. Fuck. You have no. like a couch up on some stairs. Is this, is this like this a is, screening room? Yeah. It's a movie Okay, theater. that makes more sense. All right, I was like, this is a strange setup they go, for a podcast studio. This David, is a house yeah. that, uh, the only one that had an interrogation room. <laughs> <laughs> David did very well and invested very well. So David <laughs> bought a really big house. David had a movie theater. We did a podcast. Yeah. I like that you demoted your movie theater to a podcast studio. Well, I realized I wasn't watching enough movies in it, and my <laughs> mom would just come in here and put on Fox News on the whole screen and then really? just sleep. Yeah. Really just blow it up, just Tucker <laughs> Carlson coming at you. <laughs> I tried, What's going tried on? Trying to do his laugh. Hi, yeah. I'm Tucker Carlson. Anyway, Taylor so, Tomlinson, yeah, Tom Linson. What is that? Mm-hmm. Scottish, Irish, English? I don't know. No idea. I, I have no mm. idea. Next question. Was Did I you have a nickname? Look it up? I Taylor know I was Tommy. Twenty three and me myself. In grade school, nickname Taylor Tommy. Kind of cool. No, I uh, mm. when I was coming up in San Diego, people would call me like T Tom and like Double T and things like that. Yeah, no, nice. that's all I got. T Tom. <laughs> that's, that's all I got. All right, let's go to our next question. <laughs> no, that was supposed to be most of the. That podcast. was most of the. Yeah, I have three or. I have one if she has an accent. People always ask me if I have an accent. What do I sound like? I was looking at your clips and you sound like I don't, probably Ukraine. 
<laughs> I mean, no, maybe I'm wrong. Um, I was thinking Bulgaria. Romania, but yeah. that's close. It's in the general Croatian vibe. Well, I swear I watched. What? I was people watching think clips. you had an accent, really? Yeah. yeah, I thought you had an accent. No, I grew up in California, but people always guess like Chicago or something. They guess really? like Midwest. Hmm. I think I just have a round face. I do. A, I do <laughs> I voices by trade. I think I look Midwest. I do voices by trade. Just speak, say anything. No. Peter um, Piper picked back. Uh, good to be here, Chicago. <laughs> no, that's I don't pretty any, good. I don't sense any. You have a very neutral. Well, you're both from California, right? Yeah. No, see, so, that's you're what all, we're supposed to sound. I'm see California is to you know Northern California. Right. You were San Diego. So. Well, I grew up in Modesto, Escalon, until I was like Whoops. nine, and then I was in what is like that? Riverside County. I just played the Fresno State Fair, and I asked wh who are the you know the bottom feeders in the valley. Uh -huh. Modesto is always a popular punching. Oh bag. yeah, do no. you do that when you go to it's cities? Like, oh, what's yeah. the city they hate? And you yeah. just work it. Usually, it's Fresno though. <laughs> Even if so you're in Fresno, <laughs> hates Modesto. <laughs> Fresno is an easy Nashville, target. What would it be? I don't know. Or That's Miami. a good question. Mm -hmm. I we moved uh, like as the Lacey Peterson uh, posters were going up. You moved toward from, that from Modesto. Oh, farther away we left that. Modesto when they were like still looking for her. Whoa! Like, did, were yeah. you part of the hunt or? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I was eight, so they were like, "We think we have." Your mom's like, "Maybe just two hours a day if you look <laughs> for the killer." Scott was looking then for the killer. Homework. If you get all your homework done, you can look for the killer. Yeah, I, I when I did Dallas, uh, they go. Uh, this is my big opener. I go a lot of pretty girls here from Big D, and a couple of rough ones from Mesquite. <laughs> Mesquite is good. Yeah, it's a funny one. <laughs> yeah, you can use it even outside of. Uh, Bakersfield would be a punching bag. Oh, sometimes. Bakersfield, yeah. Bakersfield. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I played Bakersfield. Ooh, I don't remember when. It was the last tour. And they were real rowdy. And I was like, Bakersfield, you're being exactly what everyone thinks you are right now. <laughs> Bakersfield. And they cool. loved that. They were like, we know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they are too rowdy. Bakersfield for yeah, us. Do you just go lot. to crowd work in that case? If they're just talking and drunk? I mean, what do you do? I mean, they just like were yelling out, I think. They were like too enthusiastic, mm -hmm. which in a theater is hard because it's like so, you guys know, it's like very, it gets away from you so fast. Yes. And you can't like make mm -hmm. eye contact with everybody. Yeah. Or someone will yell from like the balcony and you're like, all right, what? And then they go silent. Yeah. And they like, would they okay. want attention and they I get scared. The first I was doing theaters <laughs> this year scared. and I get scared because <laughs> I don't make really any eye contact. Because once you do, you sort of forget your act. You're like, I get lost in what they're thinking, or they're texting or something. Oh yeah. And then mm -hmm. when there's any pauses, people yell. It seems like that. Oh, really? Yeah, there's mm -hmm. like they I think yell, you might they just be very famous. They want oh. attention. I get stuff from 40 years ago. That's the problem. Church lady! Oh. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yeah. I'm just in the middle of whatever. Oh, like, in the middle. The characters, after you, they yell out. They want to say, Garth! After, after you've yeah. done church lady, then they yell later and you go, didn't we just, I just did that? <laughs> Why? Well, Garth said, I do it, so I, it was spaced out. So Garth says, isn't that special? You know, I get mixed up. Uh, anyway, I'm not in shape. <laughs> How many dates are your, do you do? Because you seem really, really poised up there. I mean, oh, gosh. I don't know. I mean, I'd have to go. And do you have, have do, when you tour, do you have a name? For uh, it? Yeah. We what was the current? That's half the, the battle. I know. You I love the name. <laughs> Tell me that goddamn <laughs> name. Got, these guys are openers. They're, it's a world tour. Every, they call it the world I didn't tour. Put world tour. Half, no. her phone, half her phone calls are her manager's going, What's the name of your special? What's the name of your special? I know. They made me name my summer tour, which was just me doing clubs, working out to do. And they were like, what's the what's the summer tour? And I'm like, it's the it's me and clubs. It's not a tour yet. Taylor time. And they were like, yeah. what about like new ideas? And I was like, fine. But then people are like, is it the same show as the club show in September? As if Fuck I go to a theater that. show in October and you're like, no, my manager just made me name it a different thing. <laughs> yeah. The yeah, uh, the new theater tour is called the Have It All Tour. I have it all tour. The the have it all the tour. Have it. Yeah, okay. not, I have it all tour that'd be the worst <laughs> just one more letter and I'm the worst my Damn last tour was called David Spade drops by <laughs> I packed him um, uh, yeah that's a, <laughs> that's really a, see his mind no working. I was just thinking that's at Sandler's when he's on tour but a couple of us Thought pop, pop, come by and do he doesn't even need it on the marquee he's already sold out he goes, <laughs> he goes come by and do three three <laughs> three that's do three get the light at one and a half what did you what's Whoa. yours what's yours name catch me inside <laughs> <laughs> no one can say their tour name with a straight face. It's funny because it's so dumb because it's Catch Me Outside from nine years ago. <laughs> Wasn't uh, Steve Martin and uh, Martin Short? Isn't it See Us Now Because You Won't Later or something We're like too that. old for this. Yeah, basically. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Our manager handles Marty Martin to you guys. And uh, <laughs> we, love, we love Martin. And uh, he, he, they said he's, he goes, it's a tour. Doesn't that? 
Doesn't didn't Kevin Martin Hart Short did. have one, or maybe it was a Broadway show? If I'd saved, I wouldn't be here. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> they have the best titles. Yeah. I would go just for the title with Steve and Marty. Yeah, catch me inside. I'll keep using that because then they go in January. I have new tour dates, and they go, "What's the name of that?" I go, "I don't know." Or just I don't want to. I'm not so familiar with it where you say, "If I name it, is it a new hour?" I think so. Can there be no jokes in the other one? I'm not from that school. Mm -hmm. I oh. got. Nine years between specials where I had the same basic hour. I just wrote a new hour and then milked it. <laughs> well, that's not a milking sound. <laughs> yeah, it is a milking. It's not, that's like a cow. A raspberry sound. <laughs> anyway, do a guy going in, opening his car door do a and bus. adjusting his rearview mirror. Here's a bus. Get in. <laughs> um, hang on. <laughs> you walk up, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> He's grinding the gears. Well, again. I have a character that I do in my stand-up called Sound Sound Effecty. Okay, go. And it's like, it's like with my well, I went to open my car, <laughs> <laughs> adjusted my rear view mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck <laughs> you, that's <laughs> most of my act. <laughs> He's intentionally really bad. I walked across the grass. It was really wet. Slurp, slurp, slurp. <laughs> Taylor's hey, from Orange effect. County. Taylor Tomlinson or Tommy T. Let's Tease. ask her if she's ever seen Sony Live. <laughs> because I've seen the clips on YouTube okay. and TikTok. By the way, this is our youngest person we've ever talked to. Yeah, I'm very confused. I, I have a question. Uh, how how did I get booked on this? Why am I here? Our average who, guest is who do 78 years of age. Yeah. Who do I thank for getting on this podcast? The last three. We Which need of you my team? more than you need us. This is big for <laughs> us. No, this is fun because you we- You do not need our podcast. I've seen your special. You're good. We do also stand-ups that audition for, or most stand-ups we like to find out if they were influenced at all by SNL or what yeah. they liked about it because it usually oh. ties into comedy in general. So we're yeah, sort of because you out. you're let's see, you born in what ninety two thousand two thousand ninety three. So you'd be let's call you eight or ten or twelve, like early knots. You'd be like a Will Ferrell, Tina mm -hmm. Fey. That was your yeah. pocket. And who was yeah. your yeah. crust? Jimmy Fallon. No. <laughs> oh, did you love Jimmy Fallon no, as much I as I did? I think Jimmy Fallon was probably I don't. I think he was Jimmy the Fallon update, left oh, okay. when we were watching it. Oh. Me and my friends. So then the update wrong. was Amy and Tina. yeah, Got Amy it. and Tina. Yeah, I opened for them at. Uh, Whoa! Wait a minute. At the Netflix is a joke festival, and I fucked up so bad. I was so uncool. I was really lame because because you were nervous. Somebody got yeah. Somebody at the festival. Someone wasn't available. I'm sure, and they asked yeah. me like last minute to do it. Not them, but just Netflix did, and I didn't think I was gonna meet them, and so I just like did my set, and I was like, great, it's fine. We're not gonna have to deal with it. And I went backstage and they were in the hallway and they were like, hey, great job. Thanks for doing this. And Amy's like, we were so glad you wanted to do it. And I was like, what? No, that's stupid. <laughs> that's no. And she's like, no, it's, <laughs> congrats that. on everything. <laughs> Hi, I'm Amy. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm Taylor, whatever. Like God, yeah. I was so, so uncool. And then my manager Maybe. was like, let's take a photo. And then I'm sure they were like, we're gonna, we're gonna so go. You, go. <laughs> you want me to send you guys one? And you're like, no. <laughs> Maybe it was, was so a mistake booking. I was like, this so is it hard? Because you're you've become like you've blown up. So I didn't know were you going somewhere. No, I said like a joke, but kind of a burn. And then, <laughs> okay, I was <laughs> fucking mean. I was curious rude. about when Taylor realized <laughs> yeah. she was a star. Yeah, what what day? Oh, <laughs> maybe you haven't. Yeah, let's do you have it. Go back to your diary. Open it up. <laughs> Uh, I think it's coming. I think 2040 uh, is what I'm hoping for. No, I was going to say, as far as the, the SNL connection, yeah, yeah. I feel That's so good. bad because I've literally never wanted to be on SNL at all. Like I, And I've listened to a lot of this podcast and I yeah. love it because I think SNL is so interesting mm -hmm. and it's easy for me to enjoy uh, anecdotes and, and fun facts about it because I've never had any desire to all audition right. or this be has on been because it sounds Tom so Thanks stressful. For stopping by. <laughs> we will be back next week. <laughs> Time for one more question with, before we uh, uh, No, that's interesting, Uber. but you were nervous around <laughs> Tina Fey and Amy Poehler. Yeah, no, I love yeah. SNL. Well, they're it's, great, it's, yeah. It's so nice to watch something that you don't think you can do. It's less stress because yeah. if you're so horny for it, Dana, I have to say, David, you we always say, Dana fit right into SNL and you might have had aspirations for it. It did not cross my mind, sort of like Taylor. But Taylor has done way more than I did at that point. Like I was at a point where I was so excited. I got on Joan Rivers' show and Arsenio was hosting for her. And then I got on the one of the last Johnny Carsons and hadn't done even Letterman yet. But at that mid-level where you're just starting to do stuff and get on TV, and then it came up, I would 
be stupid not to because I could, I had nothing in my future. And so I go, oh, I could write for them. But to be on it, I'm not like a mm -hmm. character guy. I'm more, I'm kind of more like you in a weird way. Like I just do my stand up and I'm kind of, uh, not one note, but I'm kind of the same persona. That would be more of an update yeah. thing. Did yeah. you ever harbor said, desires you know to do Not be Bill Murray, person. but I would be like a Bill Murray, not as good, obviously, but in the way that he's always kind of Bill Murray and everything. And then Eddie Murphy, all these other people, Dana would just disappear and be like these big characters. I That was tougher. So I see you, I kind of see what you're saying there. That's a long way of saying that. Right, yeah. Sorry. No, I would update say, was the only thing that ever looked Oh yeah, you could do me. update. Yeah, but even that, I like touring. I like being on the road I think, and I yeah. feel like you can't really do Tina that. Tina and Amy, that see, if yeah, they're aware of your stand-up, they would really appreciate it, especially Tina, because she's such a writer, writer. Yeah. You know, she's like, and your, your writing is so skilled. Oh, thank you. And comprehensive. You're like John Mulaney or something. You know, just that. Oh, that's very nice. Very comfortable watching you. And you just keep going in these different directions. And your act outs are great. I mean, you're playing characters a lot like Mulaney in your stand up. Thank you know, you. taking that's on so nice. attitudes and things. So I called Lauren and he's on the phone right now. <laughs> <laughs> we saw, but you're like, if you were a sprinter, you got out of the blocks fast because you had a, a yeah. really cool special at age 25. Yeah. So that's unusual in the modern era, isn't it? I, I guess. To have yeah. a really good one. I suppose. They pass but it's out subjective. specials. Was it Netflix? They pass out specials. They pass out, anyone gets anyone special. But not a, but have a good stocking stuffer. <laughs> but you had, you had, how do you compare that, your first one to your second one, in terms of your evolution as a stand up? Um, as far as like my experience yeah. doing it? And or? how did you feel more confident in the second one? Do you think your writing was better? Are they both melded together? Is it rubber soul and revolver for a Beatle connection? Or are they mm -hmm. sort of, did you, is who it the feel Beatles? We different? don't know who the Beatles are, me and Taylor. <laughs> we talk about things from They're the like 60s a lot. We're young. We'll yeah. talk about okay. James, you know, Sean Connery and, <laughs> and Paul McCartney Everybody a lot. Old. But we love having young people here. Um, so, well, so let's anyway. say, let's say, let's say this is true that you got a special 25. Let's just say that. Well, it's I don't called know if it's quarter sure life. True. What's a quarter of a hundred years? Right. <laughs> there now, you go. It sounds like it could be true. So you did that, but you must've been doing it. You, it says here since you were 16. So do this does you, feel like an interrogation. Do you yes, feel like, say. no, no. Cause I know let's a just lot say of that my research is correct. <laughs> we're going to accept so this let's say you premise. Do it. But if you're 16, so you were probably pretty good by, tw and you must've been really good by 25. And then do you approach Netflix or do you, do you just, it's kind of the thing where they hear about you management, that kind of so stuff. So Netflix did, obviously they did those half hours. I think they did a couple, I think they did three seasons of the standups, but they also did um, something called the comedy lineup, which is something they tried where they did 15 minute sets where they're like, it's a mini special. It's a 15 minute set. Jesus. But I did that, uh, I think the year before maybe like a year and a half or like two years before uh, I filmed Quarter Life. And after that, I was like, well, let's, you know, go back to them and say, I'd like to do a half hour on the standups because that's yeah. the natural progression of things, I assume. And uh, to my manager's credit, she was like, well, you're doing hours. Like, we're going to send them an hour and see if we can't get you an hour. And so they sent my hour that I was doing in and, clubs. And, but do you, I'm sorry, do, do you, uh, this is my last thing I'll ever <laughs> ask in a whole hour. <laughs> if you, when you do that, it would feel like to me, like when I did the first Carson, let's say my only one. How old were but you? That was my s best six, seven minutes. And then when you take that away, it's really pulling the rug out because for you to take out your 15, that's probably your favorite. And then to go to an hour, that's sort of crippling. It was for me to, to do one special. And then I wasn't from the school. I had an HBO one. It took forever and it wasn't even talked about. Mm. I was doing a TV show or some maybe movies or something. So it wasn't really totally the number one focus, but now it feels like there is that pressure or at least it's in higher rotation. Yeah. I mean, like I said, there was like probably a year and a half in between taping that 15 God, and taping the hour. That long to well, that's, I came hour. up when I was coming up, it was like, Louis CK does a new hour every year. And we were like, shit. <laughs> okay. Minutes. Like, and with social media, like I'm like writing jokes just for social media yeah. that like, aren't going to go in the hour so that I can put up clips that will people drive people to buy tickets to, to see jokes. They see haven't seen. And is yes. that little video yes. clips that you put on of yourself? Uh -huh. Not just writing. Reels. I, I'll yes, tell them real. after. I'll tell them after. <laughs> I, I don't YouTube do all this. Shorts. I'm old and I don't hey, TikTok. I don't do anything. So you anybody. pick up a payphone and what do you do? You well, look when at when it. I saw you, Taylor, video. Uh, 
being of uh, another generation, I thought this is really, and uh, of course, Whitney Cummings has done it. It's mm -hmm. sort of this extremely honest uh, young person up there, a woman in this case. And uh -huh. I just feel like you're really talking to young women in oh, such an honest, nice. real way. And there's been others, but you're, you're in that world of really delving into... I don't want to say it heavy, but just you just say anything. I mean, there's no barriers. You're not like right. a G-rated. Other things you stay away from for sure, or, or because you seem oh. pretty open. You, yeah, I mean, I stay away from anything I don't know anything about. Like I, I don't. I'm not really like an observational comic. I don't really. It's personal. Do yeah, yeah. I don't. I'm not like up there doing current event stuff. Like yeah. I'm just talking about what I'm going through. The in my personal own life. stuff is like the easiest stuff not person. to get stepped on by another comedian. Like, yeah. like when I, all my jokes are about 7-Eleven. So <laughs> it's harder because everyone has one than I yeah. say they're stole them. From I me. used to, I used to do an hour on Costco and Walmart and it, there was so much overlap. <laughs> it's no funny. one could open for me. By the way, I'm already laughing. It's funny. <laughs> Costco is a funny fucking Costco place, Costco is Dana. funny because you go in and you can't get Everything's out. big. You have to stay in Costco. Everything's you big as mine. Escape. I tell comics when I'm on the lineup, I go nothing about Costco. I used to have comics <laughs> when I'd open for them, they go, hey, come here. Are you going for me? Nothing about Jeopardy. Nothing about Wheel of Fortune. Nothing about 7-Eleven. I'm like, well, of course. It's my whole act. Yeah. But I'm like, of course not. <laughs> I'm going to get a TV and a side of ham. Costco. <laughs> um, so bipolar. So you brought that up in your last special. Uh -huh. Do you like talking about it? Or which Taylor are we talking to? Like yeah, talking who are you? About it? <laughs> Isn't it fun? Look, that's what I was going through last year. So that's what we uh, did we jokes about. about. Yeah. It's yeah. just, you know. That's that's what I had going on. And yeah. I think I, I had a hard time with it when I first figured it out. And I was like, I'm not going to tell anybody. And then like, you know, six weeks later, two months later, you write a joke about it. And I got 10 minutes on it. Yeah. And you're like, all right, I guess I got to do Let's this Let's get now. something out of this Bible. Yeah, for real. <laughs> it's true. Let's what write it, what, off some of these psychiatry Everything in bills. my life. My dad left me and it, it was immediately in there because yeah. that was personal to me. And, and you're doing a funny spin, which that kind of stuff might have a, tiny underlying sadness but you have to do this line there there was some joke i was doing recently and oh about being broke growing up and i thought it was so hysterical and then people are like it's kind of sad and i go you weren't broke. so i had to look back on it and <laughs> so tweak respect. it i'm not broke now no who said that huh no, well, I what, what was the sad part I'm terrified taylor someone thought everyone I was goes they had no money even if they were no, a silver spoon we had we he made like a million and what is that a million back then was only like 1,500 square million. feet, seven people, <laughs> no. one bathroom. No, Dad's a high school teacher. Do the you. math. 1,500 square feet <laughs> house. Seven people in there. Five kids, two adults. Yes. Okay, you win. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I'm a champion. But it wasn't, it wasn't that. There was, a, there was a monster in the neighborhood, and it was called my dad. <laughs> <laughs> that that yeah. I can't land. It's too heavy. So no, but that same thing. So you're touching on that. This is what we're talking about like bipolar or something. Yeah, very darkness personal, and lightness. Yeah. Dana goes to therapy. I've been to therapy. I got into therapy at 60. You got into therapy at what age? You're smart. Oh gosh. I mean, well, my mom died when I was in elementary school. So I went like I went to some like school counselor mm -hmm. and then I went to Ugh. like a hospice support group, which was actually crazy because they put it was a bunch of kids and they had us in like me and my sister went and our mom was dead. And then they had us with a bunch of kids whose parents weren't dead yet. Oh, and I'm like, God. why are we all in this support group? Should hospice? I be in a like, different group? Yeah. I'm like, is there not two rooms? <laughs> <laughs> you can split us See, up. That, that in the special about your mom dying and your uh -huh. eight was, and then you sat on the stool and yeah. you kind of gave a precursor. I'm uh -huh. going to be doing six minutes around this subject. Uh -huh. And you landed it. It's very tricky. How did you very work tricky. that out to make that I mean, some of those jokes I was working on really like when I was like 21 and it just mm. wasn't working because I wasn't, I don't think I had like the maturity as mm -hmm. a performer and I don't think I was comfortable enough with myself as a comic or a person and I hadn't done enough therapy uh, around it and was like, I'm fine, but I wasn't. Right. And I think the audience can smell it on you if you're like really not okay. Mm -hmm. And it is, it is tricky to land and it took like, it took years to get that material to a place where it was accessible and there were plenty of jokes that didn't make it because i was like i think that's hilarious right. but it's just and they feel bad for you and they think yeah. it's too hard to laugh at yeah so yeah they're too sad very, so you gotta you, finesse it's it. gonna be funnier than it is sad. you had good therapy like it really helped you yeah some people go I've to had, bad I, therapy like Ayahuasca. david went and it didn't work you had bad therapy i went twice and i go <laughs> i feel like i did it do we do more than this and she oh. Goes, oh and then i go like i'm fixed 
No, I got fixed <laughs> quick and she was like, high five. You're done. Wow. <laughs> Two sessions. That's Two great. Sessions. Your therapist hates money. She hates, they always go, it's, uh, you want to pay for uh, a thousand sessions up front? <laughs> And I go, how fucked up am I? <laughs> She's like, well, it's that's like laser hair removal. The they're like, it takes that many. It takes that <laughs> it many takes times. It, they get, you think it's over? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so do you think that therapy allowed you your stand up to evolve? Then were they kind yeah. of work in concert together? I went. I went back to therapy. I've been in therapy now for. I mean, I started going when I was twenty four or twenty five, and so it's been like four four or five years now that I've been going consistently. Would it be weird to ask for your therapist number? Because I'm kind of looking for a no, new one. And, just, okay. Would it be know. weird to patch them in right now? <laughs> no, but you know, when, she's when under you, the table. <laughs> when you say therapist, like, I think it's smart what you're doing because I could never have said that at that age, like, especially being a guy. Like, it's just weird for my age back then. Even now, I wouldn't probably tell people I would just do it. But the you have your friends, which you think are your therapist, but there's always something else going on with their, what the advice they're giving you. So right. it, you, you just need a clear shot of someone you don't know at all, doesn't care about anything in your life and just will straight back and forth as straight as you can get. Right. I'm sure if you're DiCaprio in there, and it, it, there's always something weird. Like you, you don't know if someone's star fucking or someone just saying this or whatever, but if you can just get someone that you feel comfortable just even if you talk for an hour and they don't say anything there's something good about that oh yeah i feel like most of what me and my therapist do is she just asks me questions mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. i say something and she goes why do you think that is or mm -hmm. okay do, do you hear that or i i i asked her once i was like having a hard session i go i mean what am i doing and she goes what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> that, that'll fair. be 200 dollars. <laughs> I love that. When yeah. I do it, they go like this. What are you doing? I tell a sad story and they go, do you think there's a bit there? <laughs> and I go, oh, thanks, therapist. You're helping me That's actually work. great. Yeah. I wish my therapist would do oh, that. Oh, I have had I've gotten you. a lot of bits out of therapy. My therapist said I was a people pleaser. And I said, that's a great observation. <laughs> Boom. These are the jokes. There's so many therapy jokes. I know. You can't help but think of Taylor jokes. Taylor laughed at my therapy joke. It was great. Um, I love therapy jokes. So, my therapist just came to a show, actually. She was like, would you mind if I came to a show? It's fine if not. I was like, I mean, do you feel like it would help this Did process? she pass out cards with your name on it? She <laughs> should have. I know. She was like, well, just let me know if you want me to go or not. She goes, because if, if you do want me to go, I have to like think up a reason. Because like both my therapist and my psychiatrist were like, we watch your specials because our family turned it on, but okay. we couldn't say we couldn't say anything. We couldn't be like, that's my client. Yeah. Like they can't like tell their husband I'm going to go see my client's comedy show. So they right. have to be like, I don't know. We're, we're going to Home if, Goods. I don't know. If did, you mentioned therapy, they did they stand up and wave and you go, no. <laughs> it's and they like, go, oh, oh, <laughs> sit back down. <laughs> but was that, did you get into stuff like, okay, the, the first thing I was told was that we have these feelings and we suppress them and they're like, as if you have a sore knee, it's like they, they're talking to you. Mm. And that they, the therapist just questions your thinking. A lot. Because if it's mm -hmm. negative, redundant thinking, I'm a piece of shit, I hate myself, we're all going to die, right. then she'll challenge that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so and you go, why do you think you're a piece of shit? Yeah. Like, I mean, well, because of these reasons. But are those reasons true? And you go, well, I guess not. If you need me to <laughs> prove it to you, I didn't know yeah. this is going to be a whole thing. And she's like, okay, well, I just wonder why you want to believe something that isn't true. Like, yeah. it's like how I talk mm -hmm. to boyfriends. I'm like, why do you think that was a good idea? Okay. Why do you need to like that thought girls? Through. Yeah, <laughs> I don't really like them, but you put a like button. I watched, <laughs> well, I watched Goodwill Hunting right before I started my first therapy session, and I was hoping for it's not your fault, <laughs> it's not your fault, but I never got it. You just walked in, and you're like, would you, would you say it's whose fault? Would you say yeah. it isn't? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whose fault isn't it? <laughs> and then you it was like, me. you're an empath, and narcissists feed on empathetic oh, people. Yeah. That yeah, that you're a narcissist, chow. Yeah. I was like, ask ask your ask your brothers what your your biggest flaw is, and they all wrote back like very funny, nice things. And I went, okay, I'm gonna ask my siblings. And I asked my siblings, and my brother immediately responds with, "I think you expect everyone to hurt you, so you push them away before they can." And I was like, "Oh, oh my god, wow. you guys! How I was old looking was this for kid? No real <laughs> answers, <pretty> sophisticated. <laughs> I know he's like he's been to therapy too. He's you know you expect Gen Z man. Everyone Gen to Z's, hurt you, so you create a situation where they hurt you. You push you push people away before they can hurt you because you yeah. expect everyone to hurt you. I think I had some of that. Some of yeah. that. Yeah, sure, sure. Some yeah. of that." But I've been married for 
yours. Yeah, what's that like? What's it like being yeah, what's successfully like being married? married? It's really cool. Is it really cool? Well, we've both been married to seven different people in the same marriage. <laughs> yeah. uh, a, a long marriage is like like some planet going behind the sun. Is There's these sort of more chilly years, and then you come back to the sun, and you're like, oh, this is great. So yeah. we're in an incredible... It's really actually. nice. Yeah. yeah, and you have to have... We never were... No one ever called an attorney or anything. We're, we just, you know... Yeah. Uh, we realized only recently we took a personality test across from each other at the table, and it was all uh, helpers. Oh. So we help our families and... You're both helpers. Helpers, oh, yeah. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. So that's, you just have to be two if good I, people in a marriage. Um, that's what you gotta do. If you have a narcissist yeah. and an empath, then the narcissist can't help it. They're gonna feed on the empathetic person and sort of right. destroy them and make it all about them. Uh -huh. That's not good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> two that's helpers are more <laughs> right after you. Like David and I are two helpers. So I say, David, I'll do the research. He goes, no, I'll do the research. Right. Right after you. But Dana, anyway, yeah. that's... <laughs> Dan has a great marriage and it's a good ad to see someone because I grew up without seeing great marriages. And, uh, you know, I have not been married and uh, it's kind of a secret. My parents um, had a sucky marriage. I didn't emulate that. That's crazy no. that you actually, because I'm scared to get, I would be scared to get in a situation that was bad. And I saw some bad ones and I still do. And I go, and there's some good ones like you. And there's a couple other most ones. Are, but most are, you struggle. I mean, you, then there's post kids and what are we doing now? But, but and, the sales pitch of like, it's work. I'm like, right, I already right. work. I don't want extra work. But you know, that's what I think happens. dating and is work. Dating it turned dating into is a drag too. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah. I was not a good dater. It's probably easier rather, to be married, to be honest. Yeah, I'd rather work than just do an endless string of interviews. Yeah. Like, no callbacks. No. <laughs> I mean, I uh, well, <laughs> the thing is like I don't shit, I can't remember if I was gonna ask. Doesn't this. matter. I don't date when I'm around, I'm thinking about comedians in general. There's not as many female comedians, so I don't. I don't think I've dated Heather. Have I dated any comedians? But it is. It's a world that you're around. <laughs> the most. Heather knows the answer. I don't know. It's just <laughs> like a great executive producer of our podcast. I don't even know Heather. If I, if I, I have, hope you uh, haven't. But I'm saying, oh yeah, I'm like forgot, oh that one for rough. five years. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, but I'm just saying that it's a. You know, when you're a bus boy or, or a waiter, you date the bartenders Guilty. when you're at right. work, when you're at work. So yeah. you're around just dudes mostly all the time. Yeah. And at night and drinking and at clubs and yeah. weird situations I, and I'm staying very, in hotels. Go ahead. I'm very curious about what, you talk about it, you're saying it, but like in, in real life, what, because people ask me, like, what do women really find attractive? Oh, I mean, I think that just depends on who it is. I don't but think there's... do you like a busy man, a working man? Or do you like a man who hangs out a lot? Oh, um, hangs out a lot, like unemployed? At the house. Well, are you familiar the... with Jordan Peterson? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I know a lot of young men, and he's a disciple, and uh -huh. it's sort of about the modern young man, you mm -hmm. know, not being emasculated or, you know. But you being an, um, a superstar comedian, it's intimidating for a lot of men, maybe. You want to meet a man who has enough, you, are you strong enough to be my man? I'm familiar with Cheryl <laughs> that's Crow. What, that's what I say on the first date. And they go, is that Cheryl Crow? And I go, um, could you uh, Is check? that one of your bits? Or like, uh, don't no. worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> it is hard to uh, keep it going when you only have certain windows. And yeah. they're like, oh, I have to fit in those two days you're home. And you're like, I guess. I mean, it, that, that's just the way it is. But yeah. And if you can't, you can't. But if they're busy, which is an attractive quality if someone else has something going on, to me it is. Yeah. And then it, 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 it's harder to sync up. I used it to is. date someone in my early 20s uh, who was also doing comedy and we used to send a veils emails. We would we <laughs> would subject line a veils. <laughs> yeah. It's not great. To the people What would you say to this state? Oh yeah, that's av availability, availability for, for a comedy Sorry. club. What would you say to this, Taylor? To get um, spots. <clears throat> men like to be admired by women. I know, I should be asking what men are attracted to. And women like to love a man that they admire. Mm. Are you asking me if I agree with that? Yeah. Or are you just or telling just me just how open, it is? Open, Ask me no, if I no. understand it. Open thoughts. <laughs> it's just a Hallmark card thing. <laughs> I, I heard somewhere. There, there's Men always a like little bit of truth. like to be admired and you know, women like to be, be loved by a man they admire. You know? I think everybody's different. I think there's some people who really need to be admired. To be, I think it's, is it Mike Vecchione that has a joke about 
there can only be like one exciting person in a relationship or I'm going to, I'm going to butcher well, the joke. Chris one Rock's headshot. One. Oh, what was the joke? Yeah. yeah. Was, is it, is that Mike Vecchio's joke? The, there can only be one headshot in a relationship. I know his joke is the, there's <laughs> one, so one person that's crazy and one person that's boring. And I, I do think <laughs> you see that. Down I do think shot. you see that in a lot of, uh, like show business relationships is obviously one person needs to be like the on crowd. the marquee. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, the other person the needs crowd. to be the crowd. Yeah. 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 And uh, I don't know. I think, I think if the other person's okay with that, I think some people are really happy to be the, su the supportive one. Like some people don't want to be mm -hmm. on camera for lack of a better phrase. Uh, right. But then I think there's other people who, like both people want that in different ways. So I don't know. I mean, honestly, I, I, I should be asking you. Like, well, you're the, the only one I used to say <laughs> successfully I, married here. I go, why, I'm why, the why are you making us come up I with know, ideas? I love what you guys twist and yeah. turn. You're the like, what do men and women want? We're like, why don't you fucking tell us, Dana Well, if Carby, you marry shit. a fan, like I married a civilian. You married a fan? Uh, I married a civilian. Okay, not, not was a it a fan? And Dana though? was wasn't a big deal. A fan, yeah. but she's very happy independent. It wasn't like we would already? go over my mm. in the clubs. You Just, were in the clubs. In oh, seven, great. I was selling out 70 seaters in San yeah. Fran. Oh. She made more money than I did at that That's point. That's amazing. It is. It's wow. weird. Um, That's great, though. Because yeah. don't you feel like if you had tried to meet somebody post fame, that would have gotten really weird and hard? I think that would be more difficult in a way. I, yeah. Who was it? Was it Matthew Perry? He's got his book out saying he only will date wealthy women now. Is that what he said? Because really? they were always, at the end of the day, after a few months, it's like, could a sister get a nickel? <laughs> could I get a dime? <laughs> Chris <laughs> could I get a car? I've never dated a girl that didn't ultimately ask me for money. Uh, really? Yeah, as we said. For, I mean, that was part of his act one time. <laughs> oh, wow. And then one time we got in an elevator. And he goes, <laughs> I'm the only TV star that has to drive a cab at night. Because, because he was spending his money. So, oh, how Actually, do you feel about it? I mean, uh, dating and being very famous. I, I, I like. Or do you I, like? I, it? I tell them, I go, I'm the star. You're the crew. <laughs> you're not even an audience. You're just a. I behind make them this, wear a shirt that you're says a, crew. You're on a it. crew member. You know, just like you work. You like you like to stay behind the scenes, but you're important. All right. <laughs> they like that. They like that description. Yeah. Uh, you're like no, here's a boom I, mic. But Shut I up. do like. I don't like. Uh, no person. I, I want funny. So it's, it's more demanding. I like when, when women are funny in their own way, even if it's just, they don't need to be Robin Williams, but you know, just like a lightness or fun to them. Uh, obviously there is to be attracted just initially. And then right. that kind of thing hangs in there for me. So it's a little demanding because not everyone is Super you know, hot and super funny. That's well, what you're not, looking for. Well, they're gonna be super funny or super. <laughs> just, hot. You know, just, just so super, I understand. Just, yeah. just, no, I know. what I'm saying <laughs> just amusing, just like oh, super amu funny. amusing. Okay. Likes comedy. Well, great and sense of humor. Light. Put it that way. Yeah, I just sense of humor. Great sense comedian. of humor. But different. when when yeah. women say, "Okay, you know, you're gross, but you can date girls because you have a sense of humor," like people like that. Uh, but sense of humor is so vague. It's like music. I right. like a girl that likes music. It's like comedy is. Do you like Carrot Top? Do you like uh, this kind of act? Do you like loud? Do you like dry? Do you, what TV shows do you like? Like if if that doesn't sync up, then that's not a sense of humor that would sync up. Yeah. You know, you have to find someone that's similar or that thinks I'm funny in my way because that's how I'm sort of all the time, at yeah. least in some version. And then it's whatever, it's more of a charm with girls. Like it doesn't have to be like jokes or anything. It's I've just, seen they like that David lightness. talking to a young woman and his game or if it's not even a game it's your patter <laughs> your patter is very good patter sounds better comedians <laughs> generally know how to talk about the elephant in the room and you know like woody yeah. allen was kissing diane keaton and annie hall can kiss now because we're going to do it later you know comedians this, know how to this, do that this, you know because uh, this, no, you're wonderful you're perfectly nice, beautiful intelligent woman, woman. <laughs> taylor actually looks very young and seems older than you are. Thank you. I get that a lot. Um, people, I've always hated that I have like a baby face and, you know, then you get to LA and everyone's like, you'll love it someday. Everyone will like it. Let me tell you, Dana, you. The Dana fat is a very young. Face. No, I had a huge fat baby face. I got carded at, <laughs> Did you? I got carded at 53 by a sober American person. Really? But then the fat starts to disappear. The next says, fuck you. 
and then you're now I'm a cowboy. Dana's in a war with his <laughs> neck no, and I'm face. I'm a cowboy. I'm yeah. a cowboy. I got some scruff. I got, hey man, I have a few wrinkles. I'm a cowboy now. Yeah. He's a pirate. No, my because <laughs> he's hair got sticking up today. He's a little bit My hair sticking up today because it's got hairspray. But when I went to Chili's last week. Yeah, your hair does say today. I filmed something yesterday. Something's going on. Yeah. <laughs> That's called should have stopped at four drinks hair. <laughs> I went to Chili's, Dana. I was this, on set last night. This is a true story. Taylor, you're going to love this okay. one. Okay. <laughs> just take a break for about 20 minutes. Just take minutes. a break. Go, go, we uh, we dig, will dig. talk about you again in five seconds. Just hang on. <laughs> uh, I was at Chili's, which I try to go to when I'm on the road. It's I love it. So we go there and the waitress <laughs> is very nice. And then she says, she does everything from, do you want me to stop people from coming over? Do you want me to do the... I'm in Chili's. I'm asking for trouble. So it's fine. I, I like to see everybody. It's fine. But we're ordering. And then when in the middle see of dinner, after we've talked about SNL, we've talked about everything. She comes back and she goes, I go, can I get a, just a Belvedere with my Diet Coke? And she goes, I have to card you. And I know who you are. I what? have to card me. Oh, yeah. And I kind of laughed and she stood there and I go, oh, okay. Oh. And I give my D and she looks at it. <laughs> okay. Like it was a little relief. Okay. You're a hundred. Like, I mean, what? Why are you carding me? Was it I first get it all the time. When did I get on SNL? When I was one. What is she worried <laughs> about? Impression of a person opening candy. <laughs> I know. Theater. During my <laughs> way too late loud. story. <laughs> Just open I was the Chili's. fucking candy so I can watch the movie already. <laughs> Go on for like twenty minutes. There's so a stand up bit. I, you can it. have it, Taylor. <laughs> Taylor, Take do it. twenty minutes on that candy <laughs> openers and movie theaters. Could you just open and eat the fucking candy? I mean, my generation mostly streams, but... Ah, Dana. Uh, my generation. <laughs> so, so Taylor... Oh, shit, I got chocolate on the microphone. This, you got chocolate on my this microphone. This podcast is going downhill now. No, it's... It, no, we this is my favorite yet. so far. This is my favorite. Because <laughs> you're so relaxed and charming. I've listened to a lot of episodes, so I feel very prepared. I think I love you. No, you I did honestly didn't... When I got asked to do this, I was like, oh my God, I didn't even know they had a podcast yep. because there are so many podcasts now. Yeah, sure. And you guys are doing it right. You got famous and then started one. That's the only way to do it now. And uh, I was like, oh, I got to listen to it because I always listen to shows before I do them. And I've like... I mean, I was just been burning through them the last few That's weeks. That's good. Just the skim. There's there's some shows where they guests will talk. Mm -hmm. There's some shows <laughs> where just Dana and I talk. Some I just talk. There's some a lot of, David just yeah. talks. Sometimes Heather or it's Greg. It's hard to do actually. It's, it's hard variety. to do where you don't talk over each other because <laughs> there's three of us. It's but a anyway. conversation, so we do. Yeah, it's like, like, we're, like we're having dinner or lunch. Well, I've talked to other people about this podcast and starting to listen to it, and everybody's like, "I just love that they're friends." Like, I think that's yes. mostly what people see. Like, Keith, to, we're gonna keep this up for longer. Oh, are you, are you guys trying <laughs> well, to quit? No, well, Dana. Is this even gonna air? Dana's <laughs> a little quieter. This is a test show. Dana's a little quieter, and so when I obviously knew him on SNL, I knew him a little bit before SNL, barely. Just he was like oh, a yeah. comic met, I liked. You I know? met him when he was a child, and he would let me open mm -hmm. for him. And then he helped on SNL. And then I got there and then after we all left, we were doing different things. But when he moved back down here, I mm -hmm. would ask if he wanted to go to dinner. He's just fun to talk to and he's one of my favorites. And then we would have some laughs at dinner. And so I have to get him out of the house though, because if, I'm if, a definite if not prodded, body. he stays in, yeah. you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm an incredible homebody. I got Kyle my guitar, like, uh, I got my keyboard, I got movies I can watch, I can paint. Yeah, Hang and I'm more thirsty and embarrassing, and I go out and I walk on the Beverly man, Center. He's a man about town. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. No, the last time I saw you was on Hollywood Boulevard going, who wants a picture? That's no, what that, I saw. Well, that's because on Thursdays and Fridays, I stand by my star and I take photos. But I actually, I think last time I saw you, you it, this is, sounds stupid, but I think I was leaving the improv and you were coming in. I said, I think you're up because I think you're after me. And Probably. I was leaving. Well, I did a show with both of you. It was I, yes. me and you two. Oh, was that the same night? I think so. Because did you and then follow Pete Jeff Ross? On, no, or? I followed Pete Holmes. Okay. I yes. think it was a Sunday. And I went in there and I saw Pete and it, he was murdering. on a roll. He yeah. was murdering, murdering and he's a big guy and he was just killing. Yeah. And I saw you go up and... Um, it, nope. Go ahead. Well, oh, so no. you had to deal with Pete to get the rhythm back into your voice. And we all do yeah. it. You have to follow someone. Did you someone follow her? I'm not I sure. I don't remember. No, Jeff Ross came first? on with me. But I was in the dark and you came by and I said, hi. <laughs> you know? Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I don't remember. How did your set go following I, someone who's crushing? That takes a like a veteran's experience of like. I thought it went okay. Yeah. Now I'm doubting it. 
based on this conversation. Pete and I talked about it. Oh my God. Was <laughs> no. it bad? No, you crushed. Oh you my always God. Kill. Did I? Uh, okay. But yeah, I no. was I was thinking, am I following that? I mean, I, I don't do that much stand up. Really? And I say, can I, you put- I, From what I remember, you played Chop and Broccoli and everyone yeah, gave killed. you a standing ovation. He killed. I went back to 1982. Yeah. I can go back there. He went back. He goes, I'm a, I'm like, Taylor, I'm a museum piece at this point. Oh People my God. are like, that come in like, <laughs> Danny goes, he's guys, still alive. Do you guys remember E.T.? This song came out that year. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote it in 82. It got on TV in 86. Let's get accurate. No, so the I like are big right now. Have you seen Stranger Things? It's very nostalgic. Yes. You're back. Yeah, everyone loves Todd the Runger, 80s. Who's using Todd Runger lately? Some shows are using Todd Runger. Hello, it's me. Oh, it's me, or, you know. Well, let me see. Um, now I'm going to ask you about your- He's uh, running out of questions. No, I'm asking about your specials. <laughs> well, there's one about a devout Christian family. I don't know if that's even a question. About I just, what? What? About you, one of my was specials. Was it a Catholic no, it family says, or a Protestant? Was you were who wrote these notes? This is straight this off This is from of, somebody called Mr. Wikipedia. This okay. is from Wikipedia? This says- you attended California State University San Marcos, which sounds like a fake college. Oh, that's true. Um, I went to I went to a few colleges. Uh, yeah, you I did went, not finish. People are like, hey, did you go to CSU and SMS FGA? <laughs> it's pretty it's, good. It's CSU SM. Is that right? That's that's enough letters, yeah, <laughs> for a college. Didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> you got. Oh wait, last comic standing. That's what I want to know. Oh, you were oh, last yeah. comic standing. And are you sequestered like on uh, The Bachelor or something? Do you have phones? Do you have anything? Or there weren't phones? We had our phones. We were just sitting in like a makeshift green room while they (laughs) sort of filmed. Was the whole show a green room? You guys live in a green room? Well, there was no, (laughs) when I did it, it was like the last season and there was no house. There were no challenges. It was just stand-up sets. Mm -hmm. So we just, we did just sit in a green room. And every once in a while, they'd pull someone to go do an interview in a chair, I guess. But it was just doing sets. And That's you just it. would and we write, stayed at the Hilton or something. You'd write a set. How did the show work? Like you, I think we all did like, th- we were doing like three minute sets, okay. five minute sets. And so you'd do that. And then the judges would give you feedback. And then you'd find out if you went through the next round. But I think if you went all the way through to the end, it was only like four or five sets. I think it was only four sets because I did three and I was in the top 10. And then you get, the winner gets a, a gift certificate at Chili's. Or <laughs> it, it was down to that at that point. I think they got, I, I want to say Clayton English got like $200,000 or something. Oh, nice. I think. I don't really remember. And then they went on tour. The top five did. Oh, you know like that? at Last Comic Standing yeah, Tour. Yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. Did you ever have a moment, because I know I did. I don't know if David did. Of like, ah, uh, maybe I'm not going to do this. Maybe maybe I like can't. Like I'm not cut out for I'm it? I'm not going to. I bombed too many times in a row. Yeah. And well, I've like, never bombed, but I did feel like, um, no, I've bombed. I was about <laughs> to say, I felt Jesus, so flat. she had that me was, going. Wow. I, was like, I forgot we just met. You I'm bombed so that sorry. night with Dana, <laughs> that was horribly, it. according <laughs> to his story. <laughs> he was a dandy little opener. If he'd get on a roll, I'd go cut it, get him off, get him off, get him off. When Start I, playing the music. I used to travel with, well, one time we did like 13 gigs We did in a the summer. Northeast tour in, yeah, in tents in August uh-huh. with 100% humidity, 105 degrees. He'd go out in shorts. Shorts, flip flops, and hang behind. over the stool. Go, life What's alert! Up? Oh, no. That was my bit. I didn't alert. think you could do stand up that low key and kill. <laughs> he kind of walking out. They thought it was me in those days. We yeah, looked more that alike. was the yeah. worst. <laughs> Woo! And then you drink and say, "Huh? Uh, What's up? What's up? This is life Cape Cod." <laughs> <laughs> and I go up and do an hour and a half and just drench through yeah. my clothes, like literally sweat all the way through my clothes. Oh, the crowd was kind of going, whoa. <laughs> What's your weirdest gig ever? I'll be like, Barbara oh my Walters. gosh. I mean, which question should I answer? The one you asked what me before? What was the previous one? <laughs> no, do the one before. Have you ever said, maybe I'm not going to be cut out for this? Oh yeah. And I think that was more of a lifestyle thing. I was like, I don't know if I'm cut out for, I don't like the hang. I have really bad social anxiety. I, you know, I like, I don't drink. Like I wasn't, I just wasn't a good feature. Like I went on the road with Bert like a few times and (laughs) it was like such a bad, like I, I learned so much from him, but he was like, he even told me later, he's like, I didn't really like you off stage at first because you weren't fun, Nice, (laughs) which is completely fair. Um, but yeah, I, I felt like maybe I wasn't, um, weirdly enough, like fun or brave enough to do it. And like with the travel and when like mental health stuff was really rough, I was like, I don't know that this is. It's a big solo outing. I don't think people take that into consideration. Well, before Mm -hmm. I, before I had the first special, 
I had just gotten to a place right before COVID that I could start bringing somebody to open for me. And that makes the biggest difference. That's a lot. And who do you, who do you use as uh, an opener? A man or a woman? Or? Uh, his name's Dustin Nickerson. He's very funny. He's like one of my best friends and we like came up together. So it's just like, Don't I'm lucky he even yeah. goes on the road And you me. you can plan your stand up around your mental health in a sense. Like I'll do mm-hmm. this little tour. I'll take a break. I mean, you, you're in theaters now, right? Mm-hmm. Pretty big theaters. Do you know what gets to where, where it's your limit? Like, let me go out for how many days and then I got to get back kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, this is at the risk of sounding like the worst. Uh, when we first, you know, sort of announced the tour, I was like, this is very doable. And then we started adding shows uh-huh. and then that becomes- That is a trick. Yeah. That becomes a little like- more overwhelming. So I think you you plan out as much as you can, but you know, after the first theater tour, I think this one I had a much better idea of like, okay, I need one weekend off a month. I need to space these out. I think now my mm-hmm. agents are like, okay, you're 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 more than a flash in the pan maybe so we can make sure you you have longevity. Yeah. yeah, they're like we can focus on your mental health and, and you well-being. forget the uh I didn't mean to interrupt you, but but I'm just doing this this year. This is the first time I've done like theater tour and Mm -hmm. you forget a lot of them because of canceled flights and shit. You have to go the day before. Oh yeah. It's too risky. So that's another day of boredom and weirdness. And then, yeah. Yeah. And then sometimes if it goes well, we want to add a late show or we want, and I said, I can't do late shows. I did it once on this tour and I go, oh my God, it's brutal. Like a theater late show is not as casual as a club late show. Do you meet and greets Big deal. And what's that? Do you do meet and greets? I don't do meet and greets, but- uh, that would kill me. Nikki Glazer goes out. I go, we, we, we have the same person. And <laughs> Alex keeps saying I poison her because I go, you do late shows? I go, oh, I can't handle it. I was just commending her. Yeah. Because she's like a grinder. You know, yeah. she works and she can talk a lot and she does a podcast and that. But she's like, that's a different type of personality. She can do that and thrives on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then he goes, did you tell her not to do late shows? I go, no, 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 no. And he goes, don't poison her. And don't go to Gaff again. He's got all these people. And I go, yeah. I, I'm just saying me, but if they add a show, it's the next night. So it's- I'm trying it, to do that now. It's, so, it's okay, but then it's a whole nother day and it's yeah. a whole nother- Taylor. I have a question based on what you Okay, give said. me a half hour to answer. To okay. Tell my answer <laughs> I'll, to I'll her do question. <laughs> do you, how, how are you with saying no? I've gotten better at it. Like the agent really want, I mean, it's just a conflict of interest. You, yeah, it's money. Yeah. And are you yeah. good at, or, that's a therapy thing of like, my therapist said to me, remember, it's good for them, but is it good for you? Right. Which I is feel very like, simple. I feel like once yeah. I had like one, one, I had like one, I had like a breakdown at one point and this was like years ago. And uh, I think I had to cancel like a few club weekends and that was maybe when they were like, okay, let's just let's make sure. Let's pace this out. Yeah, let's pace this out. And I think my agents are pretty good about that now. Like we were adding shows, we're going over to like the UK and my agent was like, okay, do you want to, do you want to go over the week before? Cause that's a lot. Then you're on the road for like three weeks. Like you're just Oof. gone. Is that what mm-hmm. you want to do? And like, I was like, yeah, I think so. And he was like, okay. Cause I'm just reminding you how burnt out you were yeah. this time last year during April. And like, maybe just think about it. And well, that's good. Like, I think also just like, I have a place in New York and I have a place in LA and that's made it easier too. That's uh, way better. It's, isn't it that fascinating that Netflix... So, you know, stand up stars just obviously go to Europe. That just wasn't around in the 80s. I mean, to, to have some value cool. overseas was very rarely the case for Dane and I growing up. I've never even done it over there because I don't know if my jokes about Ralph's will work. <laughs> so, you got to call it blippity boobas. <laughs> That's our Ralph's. <laughs> yeah. oh, I said Bank of America in Canada Ooh. last weekend. I was in Toronto and somebody DM'd me and they were like, we love you, but Bank of America. And I was like, you know it's a bank. What is it? You know where I'm from. We don't understand. It has the word bank. We yeah. don't understand. I didn't say Chase. <laughs> yeah, come on. Uh, I was at Manny Hanny. Remember yeah. Remember Manufacturers mm-hmm. Hanover? Yeah. Uh, but I, I haven't done overseas. I would like to in um, Australia, but it is, it is, it's uh, one time Chris Rock told me, Spade, you're on two <laughs> shows today on TV. You're, both your sitcoms are on, on, on the three channels. So he says, get over here. You're famous. Come. I go, but his, his act is like politics, very, you know, wide range. You can understand it anywhere. Marriage, relationships, mm-hmm. race, those things you can talk about almost anywhere. Mine, I, I would have to go through my act and go, that's why the stories like you were saying about yourself are good. They travel. Yeah. Oh yeah, and no one's doing them because it's just your experience. So I tell stories a lot about my life, and my 
angle on a story hopefully is my own angle. You know, it's like my fingerprint. So those are starting to happen more because that's what works. And I don't, I'd be scared of the pressure of, I think what this new thing is, is Taylor, uh, you know, you're doing great. So you're going to go to theaters, which is more money. It's more fame. It's great. And then put a special out and then name it. And then that'll work for your next special and then your next tour. Mm -hmm. And and that's sort of scary in itself because it's a lot of pressure and writing an hour that you like is, is hard, you know, if you're hard on yourself yeah, to go, I don't, I don't love this. And they're like, you're ready. And you're like, it's just, I don't want people to go, ah, it wasn't as good as the last, you know? Yeah. I have That's that a scary thing. This weekend, a <laughs> place that I was right Did before you the stand pandemic. Up this weekend? No, I have one this Saturday and I, I don't, I don't have new stuff for that place, so I'm going to try to write it tomorrow. <laughs> you know what? Just replace Jimmy <laughs> Carter. With I'll you know, just do Joe Fauci Biden. for 10 minutes. I can just extend. <laughs> 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 I mean, you guys have these crafted acts, and I can just, go, you know. I know. We're doing it wrong. Well, I, I, I'm just not a stand-up. I'm a sketch player. You have talent instead. Yeah, he has, uh, he has talent. Like everything like. I'm hearing. <laughs> hey, Fauci, go fuck yourself. You can get two boosters, three vaccines, you're still getting COVID. <laughs> Five boosters, three, <laughs> you're still getting COVID. That's why we're introducing the daily COVID shot. Every day you get a COVID shot. By the time you get to your car, you got no immunity, but it's a beautiful 39 seconds. Boom. <laughs> and go fuck yourself. And go, and from the bottom of my all new leather Fauci's, go fuck yourself. That's David my, and I are standing, just for the listeners. I was home. standing that ovation. Is a standing I'm ovation. glad to get that out. That warmed me up for Saturday. That is fun to get say a bit. Have you ever, do you ever say a bit in your hotel room before you go out because you go I don't know this bit and I yeah. cannot I think yes. I'm great I do but when I get out there I do not want to fuck this up for a theater crowd yeah I owe them it has to be smooth mm -hmm. and it doesn't seem smooth until they see it not smooth and they go and I go that's ah, a little undercooked I dropped right. a line you forget line. your ending you it's forget the middle of it you go Ugh. I don't even know where this is going yeah you see it on your set list you go I start it and I go I don't know what's going on. Yeah, a club I, you fuck I, up, you're like, at least you got chicken fingers. Like, yeah. Well, yeah, you yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. say I fucked up and they're there. I was playing 1500 seater and I dropped a line and it was just kind of embarrassing. And I got, I go, so the whole souffle of the joke yeah. was fucked. And I'm oh. like, uh, I just, souffle. you know, do you, do you have notes on stage hidden anywhere? I do. Or, um, do you, or you got it in your head? Sometimes I, I just recently, now I don't, but. Also, you can take your, I record every set on my phone. And so if listen you ever to really, it? you That's know, painful. not always. I, but do. I do. I record every set just in case yeah. you stumble mm -hmm. into something. I mean, I'll listen to it if yeah. I haven't gone up in a few days to mm -hmm. like get it back in my head in the mm -hmm. same way you say it over and over in your hotel or room. Or go hear a joke. Back. You go listen to it. goes, That's yes. how it goes. That's, That's right. how yeah. it goes. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I, I did have a set list like on the stool while I was doing clubs all summer because things were moving around and. You know, you do the thing with the index cards on the floor and you move it sure. all all over the place. Um, but now I I have it. You know in your head? It. Yeah, now wow. I do. Because you say it enough. Do you have a bit right now that you don't have to say it out loud that's just kind of coming together and you're thinking, oh, that's going to be a great chunk. Oh, man. I don't, I um, feel that, I kind of feel that way. About vest sweaters, I was told I just, by somebody. No, I'm kidding. Oh, I was like, I don't <laughs> know. I'm like, birdie told what do me. I have to write? <laughs> you have a great cardigan, Chuck. <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel like kind of the the best <laughs> part for me of like getting to an hour is when you realize you have more than you need and you go, oh, good, I can get rid of these couple yeah. things that weren't that strong. Yeah. But like, that's mm -hmm. the great thing about TikTok and Instagram is like, if you have a joke that you're like, this is fine, but I don't want it like, in a special just go just goes like on tiktok and to be put into a fucking wood chipper basically yeah and then you never mm -hmm. use it again yeah that i was i didn't even <laughs> notice that until someone told me they go it's a lot of crowd work on tiktok because you don't want something real from your act i'm like oh my god oh, yeah. that's true because how why would you burn it i mean i get it i was just talking to this other comedian i work with on the road and i was asking her i go i feel like you're doing too much good stuff on <laughs> online Online. Oh, yeah. I mean, it sounds crazy to say, but I was. she's like, I know, but I got to get to a certain point. But is right. the audience very complicated. kidding to all of it? Do you feel like, are they seeing everything, your audience? No, I don't know? think I don't, so. You know, but, it, you know, it takes one. I remember I was doing one shows in, I was doing comment. shows in like New Jersey a few years ago, and I tried a joke on stage and the girl in the front row went, I saw that on Twitter today. And I was like, 
Yeah, that's I tweeted it today. Sorry, I didn't yeah. think. Did anyone else see it on Twitter? That's what I thought. Like, did you yeah. have to yell that? So then that kind of got <laughs> even, in my head forever. Did even you your special, I you know, I'm new to it. My special was HBO, and it was years ago during Just Shoot Me, and then I did uh, one on Comedy Central that was sort of in the witness protection program. No one saw. Dana kept trying to see I it. I tried to see it. it. I couldn't. Oh, yeah, Comedy Central. I couldn't. It was online, just... he's like, and then I got to join, then I have to- Comedy Central's the worst. Go through Paramount they Plus. They suck, They yeah. suck, dude. So- Let's shit on them. I'm not going to yeah, find yeah, them anymore. I don't need them. Let her talk. <laughs> All right. That was fucking Comedy Central. That's so hacky. I think their YouTube was doing well for some people for a little while, but now mm -hmm. I'm like, what do you- But yeah, the, mm -hmm. the people's old specials getting like tied up by them and no one being yeah, able to see Yeah, and that was sucks. hard for me because I go, I would almost use that material again because literally- it was a waste. Yeah. So I finally did Netflix one. By the way, they weren't clamoring for mine. It was just like back then, it was right when they started to bid on them. Mm. So we had a bid and they didn't answer for a week. We said, okay, let's just do it. Let's just get out of the way because I had a window to do it. Mm -hmm. And then this one was fun. And when it aired, they reminded me, now you, it airs tomorrow. So when you're in Texas this week, you're doing a new special, right? I'm like, oh, yeah. I didn't even really think ahead like that. Who said that to you? It was managers and also That's comedians so asked me. Because my agents mm -hmm. were like, yeah, I feel like comedians are more like, yeah, so you need a new hour. My reps were like, you can do like half and half. Yeah. Like, and I was like, no, you can't. Not anymore. Like when we filmed it, I started doing half and half in those like few months before it aired. Yeah. And then it, when it aired, I was doing a new hour. It's so hard because to throw the away fans would yell out or yeah. something or not be delighted to hear it, it again. No, no really, I probably could have. I, I know no could've. one really gives a fuck. I, I had because I was asking. Else, Sometimes they something. like yeah. to hear the ones that they've. I never know what the hard rule is. I know what people say. And then the argument of like, when I see a band, they better not sing one fucking new song. I mean, right. when I see, I just saw the Doobie Brothers and it was like fucking new <laughs> yeah. song. Here's our new song. Yeah. I, and I, they had a like bad tomatoes. case of the new songs. Yeah. They Doobie did three Brothers. new songs in a row. Yeah. <laughs> I, went to, I went to 7-Eleven. I go, I have three songs? 7-Eleven? <laughs> I left. Yeah, I had tons and you of went to They're playing the old ones. And you went to Big Gulp? No, I got an Abba Zabba. <laughs> And a magazine. Remember Dennis Miller's <laughs> bit about Big Gulp? Yeah, he 32 goes. ounces of soda. What kind of human being needs that much liquid, okay? They're just somebody who just stepped off the surface of the sun. I parked love my Dennis's jet writing. skis in there. Yeah. yeah. Did you, when you went back on the road right after it aired, did you ask the crowd who watched it? I did that. No, I didn't make, I, that feels like a mistake because then I get scared and go, uh oh. Oh, well, I was doing a new hour, but I did, so I said, who watched the special? And it wasn't everybody. Yeah. And then I said, who hasn't watched the special? Because they had tickets to yeah. this, because they bought that before they knew. And a lot of people cheered. And I said, yeah. okay, well, go home and watch it, please, because these are new jokes. Yeah, don't forget, go watch it. Yeah, them. my fear is that, because uh, I am not, very famous, mm -hmm. um, that people are not going to come back if I put out a special and then they come see me and it's the same material. My fear is that they're going to go, well, we'll just wait for it to come out. But have you ever seen someone with your friends and you go, like when I go to the store, I stop by and I'm with a buddy, I go, oh, because everyone's good pretty right. much, you know? So like if Taylor was on or Sebastian or someone, I go, oh, watch. And I go, oh, she didn't do that one. You know, and um, you go, I want them to see this joke I like of yours or something. And, but at the store, you're also knowing there's other comics watching. It's hard. It really, it's really hard to even just work out there. Oh my God. I, you can't. People I feel like watching I can't. And you go, I, I, yeah, the vibe's this is not the place. Weird. I don't like it. No, it's, it's a competition. I, you don't I don't really like bomb that. And then have people I'm more go, like you, Taylor. I don't like to hang out. Yeah. I was always, first thing Jay Leno said, because my son was trying to do stand up. He goes, yeah. he goes, get him away from the comedians. Yeah. You know, don't hang out, you know? Yeah. It's a, it's a dead end street because you get in love with just hanging out. Yeah. But, you know, this happens when you're writing comedy. You'll do a bit, you shoot the special, and then you think of something that goes right with that. So you expand mm. it. Yeah. And so yeah, then you, your problem. You know? Yeah. Your it's bit's like, bigger and fatter. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And you still want to do it. And you're like, but the germ of it was on there, but it was undercooked. Now it's better. Yeah. I'll be honest. I just don't work that hard. And if they get quiet or don't really laugh, I just, I'm getting paid, right? <laughs> you know what's good? It's, it's good to get mad at the audience a lot. I tell them they're wrong. They go, this is lot. your fault. Yeah. This is your energy. I'm their therapist. I said, where do you think you were wrong during this hour? <laughs> Why do you them. think you're not laughing? Do 
Do you think because of this time with us that maybe you would try to get on Saturday Night Live? Because we have connections. Yeah. Now I'm going to. Yeah. Because that's why I'm here. I forgot about Update, though, because when I was there, I should have fought for Update. I didn't. Yeah, you'd be I perfect. was more built for Update. I would try to always get on Update. But Dennis was there and then Kevin Neal and they were good. And then, you know, when I, I guess Norm came on. But do you feel like if you got on it, uh, you know, like now, you'd be like a Pete Davidson type? <laughs> Where they put you on well, update and you just blow up being like the young I guy. I don't know. This I is a this is a brand new world. It's a new yeah. world. Yeah, Pete got bigger than the show in a way because right. of, for all the different reasons, you just become a global yeah. star. And once you're in that tabloid world, you just you know because fame is is an end in itself. I mean, you can monetize fame like nobody's business now. Get mm. really really famous and monetize it. Yeah. But yeah, back then, you could fame sell a clothing line. Yeah, you could You're do big that. enough. Taylor I shoes. I don't think I Taylor think. clothes. Isn't there Taylor and, and well, Taylor? Do you have merch? I love hearing about I have merch. merch. Yeah. <laughs> you have I love merch. the defeat. I have a merch. Why, are you, why is it all like, I don't know. I was like, <laughs> I, I was like, I don't really need merch. And everyone's like, you do. And I was like, okay. Do you have catchphrases on it? No, just to, not mm. now. Like, the, I never, mm -hmm. no, I don't think I ever really did. I have very simple merch now. Like, it just says there was some new stuff. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I I have uh, same topics, new jokes. I have just like my production company like logo is like a little leather jacket. So I who's minding your? In, you have a production. I mean, do you do have you a business sell? manager, Taylor? Yes. Are you saving money? Yes. Good. How rich you are? How rich are you? Because we'll tell you because we know. How rich you are? I looked up here. I'm, look, I drove up to your house. I'm not this rich. That's for goddamn sure. Like on Celebrity Net Worth, what would it say? For I don't know. Should we <laughs> Google it? <laughs> now, they don't put answer. you at 3,800. And I was like, Spade's got more money no, than 3,800. When, when you... Uh, when you go, do you, I have merch and I don't sell on the road. I'm too embarrassed. What? I don't know What's what to do. What's your merch? I'm scared. Uh, Does it have catchphrases on it? New, next question. <laughs> Fly, why don't what, you do fly What decade the are the catchphrases from? Not this one. <laughs> hey, buddy. No, you know what? I my plan <laughs> is hey, my, buddy. my plan is to have a good mo a movie that works every decade for new crowd. Uh -huh. So I did Tommy Boy, and then I did Joe Dirt, and then I did Wrong Missy. No, I did Grown Ups and Wrong Missy. So all yeah. you need is four. And then you so you have t-shirts. Buys you for another all ten them? years, and then you've had two long running you, series. Then you, oh, you got another one. Oh, yeah. he, you've been in what twenty movies and. Two long running series. Oh, that's it. And then I did two years on uh, Eight Simple Rules, and then two years on that, and five years on SNL. Good lord, what wow. a resume! I'm still broke. And I'm, you're going on the road. I'm getting nervous. I'm on the road. Bust wow. my home. Add dates and <laughs> new show. But that that's the tricky thing is you're already burnt out looking at your schedule, and you get it just perfectly where you go. I can handle that. Yeah. And then when you add a date, it seems like a new thing, not part of that thing. You go, well, that's flattering. They're going to add a show. I'm just yeah. doing one right now. Add here, add here, add here. And I go, wait a second. Yeah. I'm going to get there and ah, fuck you guys. So Bye. I predict. Yes. I predict right now, no pressure, <laughs> that oh, no. Taylor is going to make the leap within the next few years to arenas like Mass. I'd Square say Garden. movies. We'll see. Because stand up is sort of a means you, also. She's to got do the movies. looks for movies. Yeah. You got a nice face for the lens, kid. <laughs> no, but you <laughs> Baby could. Baby face. That is a hard thing because. In in my day, in my day, my day, we didn't <laughs> have yeah. Netflix specials. <laughs> what, but you would be the the it was the juxtaposition. I don't even think I think that's a word. But it was um, <laughs> it is now. It was <laughs> to stay in town to audition, but also to go on the road to make any money. Right. And to stay in town to audition, you can do it on, you know, Zoom and send in auditions now. But it was always stay in town, and then you couldn't make any money. Mm. And then I'd fly back. I had a two week gig. Mm -hmm when I was an early stand-up for maybe 500 a week in Hawaii. So it was going to be a good trip and 500 a week was pretty juicy. So I said, oh, and then I had a third callback for In Living Color. Oh, and I was no. so new and I'm like, I'm not right for this show, I'm telling you. Um, not super character. And I think I, I had to stay. Oh, no. And I go, I told Hawaii, I'm just going to miss Monday and Tuesday and I'll come Wednesday. They go, nope. I missed the whole two weeks. They go, now oh, we'll get someone no. else. I go, fuck. So I go in there and bomb my audition. I'm like, good luck. Jim Carrey. Oh, well, one of us is going to get this. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. It's May always the Jim Carrey. Carrey. <laughs> <laughs> just Why give it to Jim Carrey. The best guy. I know. I just, I just walk in. I go, this, oh, God damn. Jim Carrey auditioned for SNL when I did. He put his foot behind his neck and he danced <laughs> and turned into an orangutan and is, is doing all these impressions. I mean, it was like, give it to that guy. <laughs> he does that no, on his OnlyFans. No, we're only picking fans. you. Really? <laughs> anyway, he now did all right. Let's let Taylor go. We've 
We've, no, we're, we've we're halfway enough. done. I know it sounds weird, but they probably didn't tell you. <laughs> we have all three this hour candy and stuff for you because we just got we that in the mail. Oh, is for this all for our me? guests. Well, it's you a, get one. Well, of thank you for being our <laughs> youngest <laughs> guest. Gift basket, but you get funny one and gift. charming. I'm, this is just my own personal review. <laughs> I just put nice on the top, yeah. but with with some. It's a single sheet of paper from a yellow legal pad. This is Dana's. It's my deep name with dive. a star by it. My, <laughs> this is how I do my notes. I need to. I can't do it like him on on a word processor. I like to have it just rumble. Yeah. You see the arrows. Old school. But it just I says watched dead your... mom bipolar. <laughs> yes. Yes. You? Yeah. No, it doesn't. It does. Oh my god. <laughs> dead mom bipolar jokes. Because I was like, oh. who lands those jokes? Yeah, that That's is the ball. So that funny. is. And we got into it. Comedy. Yeah, comedy yeah. sixteen with an arrow. Yeah. Comedy Cause 16. Because that's, that's You can take this if you want. I would love to take Comedy that. 16. 16. Yeah. Will you uh, sign it Taylor for me? Taylor Thomas. Yeah. I'm going to sell it. But God, um, <laughs> but I, I watched your shows. Like David oh, won't watch so nice. anything. He just looks at the Wikipedia. What I like to do is eat and then take a nap. <laughs> and and have, then have a, have a protein I bar. I have one ready because we're leaving. <laughs> I had one during the podcast. I'm, well, theater guy. We covered every possible thing about SNL we could today, and we learned a lot You've about SNL. You've been our youngest, youngest and most popular guest with our younger audience. We're yeah. going to bring in a whole new world. We learned about hashtags. We learned about tagging people. We learned about all the stuff we need to know and about. And you learned a lot about us with our yes. over talking and parenting. On the way here, she's frantically going, which one's which? Who's done what? Tell me, I'm almost there. <laughs> <laughs> Just go. It'll be on my phone? Okay. <laughs> I'll check the phone. I oh, won't yeah. figure it out while we're doing it. What if I don't? What did he do again? Some kind of lady character? One guy talks like a girl. No, he's a lady. What is it? Uh, you're cutting out. <laughs> All right, thank you, Taylor. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank okay. you, Taylor Tomlinson. Yeah, I need a head start, and then you go, then you leave. <laughs> This has been a podcast presentation of Cadence 13. Please listen, then rate, review, and follow all episodes. Available now for free wherever you get your podcast. No joke, folks. Fly on the Wall has been a presentation of Cadence 13. Executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade, Chris Corcoran of Cadence 13, and Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment. The show's lead producer is Greg Holtzman with production and engineering support from Serena Regan and Chris Basil of Cadence 13. 